So if you bought the brand new Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, you're probably looking for decent protection and finding decent quality screen protectors is actually quite hard. Some of the most premium options come from Korean firm Whitestone and its dome glass is now actually available for Google's handsets. Well, you're probably wondering, are they worth the asking price? We tested them to find out if they are. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. When they're priced at approximately $50 for a two pack, there is actually some early bird pricing and pre-orders at $40. That's around about $20 to $25 per screen protector here from Whitestone. And in the cold light of day, that's positively extortionate. When you consider though the price of the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, at least the screen replacement pricing, and it comes in at double or triple that cost, it's going to be easy for me to say standing here that the prevention is always cheaper than the cure. One of the major reasons that people tell us that they swear by the Whitestone dome glass is that it should, at least in terms of its pricing and where it's positioned, mimic or feel like the high quality glass that you'll find directly on the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro displays. It's true that each screen protector does feel like a step up over most cheaper alternatives. I'd be hesitant to say it feels exactly like the real display glass, but the dome glass does feel about as close as you can possibly get, at least given its appropriate price tag. The adhesion process is also one of the key differentiators. Whitestone's UV bonding process uses a liquid adhesive, which is applied directly to your smartphone screen before you place the actual glass screen protector on top. Because of that, if you want simplicity, and low costs, we think this is not going to be the screen accessory to consider. Undoubtedly, another reason though that Whitestone jacks up its price is that they offer a lifetime warranty with each of their products. With exception to a few other brands, there are very few screen protector manufacturers that do offer lifetime guarantees on any product, let alone something that is right in the firing line like a screen protector and can break, especially with a drop. I'm not going to show you how to install the Whitestone dome glass as I myself am probably not the best person to follow this procedure. There's been times where I've missed out key components and key aspects of it, but you should follow the guide that should be on screen. There'll be a link down in the description below. Apparently the Pixel 6 series process is the same. Overall, it's fairly consistent, but it can be a little bit confusing for first timers. For those wondering what gives though, when a screen protector comes in at $50 for a two pack, well, Here's everything that comes in the box and you might get a better indication. This time around, there is a UV USB-C powered curing light, which is new over the micro USB options, which have been used previously. There's the, obviously the Whitestone Dome Glass Screen Protector. You may have a multiples of these if you haven't used one already. The adhesive, there's some adhesive absorption pads for the sides of the mounting frame and a position bridge for the adhesive itself. There's also some pin loaders, a speaker masking film, some connector masking film, alcohol wipes, uh, cleaning cloths, and dust removal stickers, alongside with a screen protector removal card. And there is even a camera module protector film. Once it's installed, if you've ever purchased a Whitestone dome glass before, then you'll likely have some idea of what to expect. The tempered glass reaches almost all the way to the edges, but with just enough room so that all official and around 99.9% .9 of third party cases out there will fit without pinching or even overlapping the edges of your display or the screen protector itself. For a phone like the Pixel 7 with a flat screen, this isn't a problem at all, but for curved screens, as found on the Pixel 7 Pro, some of the edges are ever so slightly exposed. And this means that truly complete protection from angle drops isn't going to be offered because you can feel the very edges of your display underneath. This also means a direct corner drop could still prove fatal for any curved screen. So in theory, that isn't necessarily a negative. That said, the bulk or the main area of your screen is covered and protected and should be safe from direct dings, scuffs and scrapes, which is probably the most important bit. Provided you follow or closely follow the in-depth installation process, the fit and finish that you'll attain on your smartphone is genuinely second to none. And I'll say that for, as someone who's used them in the past and reviewed previous versions, the dome glass itself also has its own basic oleophobic coating, which should deflect dirt, grime, and fingerprints almost as well as the original display itself. At first though, after the process, your phone may feel a little bit sticky and smudges might be quite visible. Just use a microfiber cleaning cloth and any leftover alcohol pads to wipe away any residue and grease. And it should, over time, it should feel a lot cleaner. When fitted, I have to say the glass feels smooth and 
very much like the real glass rather than a muted matte rough or even tacky texture that some cheap alternatives tend to edge towards. Given the problems that many faced with this Pixel 6 series in display fingerprint last year, it's probably good to know that the Whitestone Dome Glass works just fine with the new Pixel 7 and 7 Pro in-screen fingerprint readers, which themselves are improved. Even without re-registering digits, it appears to work just fine in our experience, but we would still recommend unregistering and re-enrolling your fingerprints for seamless unlocking on your device. Unlike last year, there were a few things that changed. Firstly, the Pixel 7 series has face unlock, and the white stone for the Pixel 7 Pro has an O-shaped or punch hole cutout rather than a U-shaped cutout. And it appears to line up really, really well here. It's not quite perfect, but the actual camera or none of the camera or the borders are actually obscured. I have noticed that this change means that dust and lint can get impacted into this section a bit more readily. Just a quick jet of air or a brush on my t-shirt or even a cleaning cloth, and it is easy to get rid of that though. Even without this issue, this dust issue, registering for face unlock and using seems to be absolutely fine on both devices with no issues. As I note, the Pixel 7 Whitestone also has that hole punch and that has no problems either. Something that probably needs to be mentioned here is that unlike regular screen protectors with pre-applied adhesive, the UV bond here with that extra glue that you put on is much harder as a result. There's also the added bonus if, it, that if your screen has already had a few micro abrasions or even small scratches, these should be less visible as the liquid adhesive will fill gaps and make scuffs smaller and less noticeable once you've got that white stone dome glass applied. I will say as well that the rear camera protection is fairly poor quality and not really worth the effort unless you simply must have full device protection or you're worried about that. The guide tabs were, were pretty frustrating and and sometimes they would just snag during the installation process, which is not exactly ideal. It also doesn't quite stick as well or as cleanly to the metal camera bar on the back of the Pixel 7 series, all while attracting dust and dirt. I'd say avoid this, even though it is a nice additional extra that Whitestone do throw into the box. In summary, at $50 for two screen protectors, an installation kit, plus a daunting and sometimes finicky process for some people, uh, it, it's not necessarily something that we suggest for everyone. It, it's definitely not worth it for the flat screen Pixel 7 in some ways. I feel it's actually a completely different answer though when we discuss if it's worth $50 for two Pixel 7 Pro screen protectors though. Curved displays just seem to be problematic for screen protection in general. Most standard screen protectors simply will not work here. And this means that finding good quality screen protection that will accurately fit the admittedly softer Pixel 7 Pro display curves can be frustrating, especially at this early phase when the device is only just hitting the market. Online storefronts are littered with poor quality options that in some ways attempt to trick you into purchasing with fake reviews and often dodgy feedback. At present, Google actually only offers two certified screen protectors that work with the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro on their own online storefront. The only tempered glass comes from Zag, and that is priced at $50 for just one screen protector. While they have Google's official seal of approval, it makes Whitestone's offering look positively cheap at almost half the price per screen protector themselves. This is something to think about, as with any curved screen smartphone, the quality of screen protected diminishes quickly the cheaper the entry price. Now, in my own experience, if you don't mind the feel of a tacky or TPU screen protector, then I think you can pick up a multi-pack for around $15 and it will do just a fine job. That said, the Whitestone Dome Glass is just so much harder to recommend for the standard Pixel 7 because it has a flat screen. There is a wealth of cheap screen protector options that already work or work just fine and we'll likely see more emerge over time. I've used a cheap no brand option from Amazon that cost under $10 for a three pack and it came with a guide frame, took seconds to apply and it seems to work just fine with the fingerprint scanner, although I will say it doesn't feel perfect. I think it's fine for everyday protection. I think though when you start to factor in that extra bonus of a lifetime warranty that comes with Whitestone, that relatively high asking price starts to make a little bit more sense especially if you have a drop and the screen protector does take the brunt and then itself becomes unusable, but your phone is fine. There really aren't many brands that do offer that level of confidence in the product, as I mentioned earlier in the video. To add to that, I've kept the original Whitestone Dome Glass on my Pixel 6 Pro since launch back in mid-January when I last reviewed it, and it looks and feels great despite plenty of use and abuse 
over the last 10 months. It's held up well and will continue to do so for some time to come, I'm sure, and the adhesive itself doesn't seem to have broken down or even got any looser at all. Sometimes premium cases can exceed that $40 mark quite easily, and while we're sure that many people out there will think that's way too high and balk at the idea of spending almost $50 on a screen protector two-pack, it's a painful expense, but having used a Whitestone dome glass, at least with the Pixel 7 series, I think it's only worth it for those that want that real glass feel on the smaller flat screen model specifically, but it is about the only premium option that currently works well with the curves on the 7 Pro. When you've spent almost $600 or $900 for your Pixel 7 or 7 Pro model, that might be a painful potential cost, so we fully understand that you might want something a little more wallet friendly. Luckily though, there are a growing number of alternatives for you to consider. The downside here though is that, like last year, because the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro differ in both size and actual screen type, it's easy to recommend more affordable alternatives for that flat screen device, but a little harder to find good quality curved glass screen protectors for the 7 Pro. In our opinion, for that device, soft TPU, TPU protection is the only way to obtain great screen coverage, even with the softer curves found on the Pixel 7 Pro versus the Pixel 6 Pro. The fact is that high-end accessories are not going to be for everyone, but I must admit, I do think the quality here is very noticeable when using the phone. It's as close to the actual screen as I've tried, and that's going to be a big selling point. That's not a full seal of approval, but there is an undoubted quality on offer here that even if the application process is one of the most in-depth. I am interested to hear your thoughts though. Do you actually think that the Whitestone Dome Glass is worth the entry price? Let me know. I'm really intrigued to hear your thoughts. But until next time, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching. You'll find links to some cheap alternatives and the Whitestone themselves down in the description below. And I will speak to you later.